Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So I am starting a new series on this channel called Rabbit Chat, where I sit down and I talk to you and give you all the information about certain topics of raising rabbits. Now, it is gonna be a lot of information. I am breaking these videos up by topic so that I don't overload you with information. These are not simple how-to videos. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you this is the steps you need to do. I'm gonna tell you why you need to do certain things a certain way, why they don't work if you don't do them that way, you know, that sort of thing. I want you to know the ins and outs of raising rabbits so that you know why and you can share that information with others. Because my goal is for everybody who wants rabbits to be able to have rabbits, everybody who wants to provide that rabbit meat for their family to be able to have that option to do so because it's feeding families. And that's what I'm all about is helping those people who need the help. So if you are one of those people who need help, who want a better understand how to raise rabbits either as a pet or for meat or you know whatever you want to do that's cool i know a lot of people raise them for pets they raise them for show they raise them for animal feed to feed like their dogs or to train their dogs to hunt things like that they raise them for meat for their self they raise them for furs you know however you plan to use those rabbits in all clarity we use our rabbits as meat on our homestead this particular rabbit right here is a four-week-old rabbit kit and is hopefully going to be hanging out with us as a breeder. So I am getting in some handling time, adjusting this kit to being handled, messed with, um, because when it comes down to it with our breeders, I am constantly moving them, I'm posing them, I'm weighing them, I'm breeding them. They get handled a lot. And so if I can start my kits out from an early age being handled, they will adapt to that better. But I digress. The topic of today is not on handling kits. The topic of today is on breeding rabbits. So who can breed? Technically, any domesticated rabbit can breed with any domesticated rabbit as long as you have a boy and a girl, regardless of their breeds. Now, the caveat is you do not want to breed something like a Flemish giant buck to a Netherland dwarf doe because Flemish giant kits are going to be bigger than Netherland dwarf kits and so you know it's just a bad combination. Keep your rabbits relatively the same size. Now a Netherland dwarf buck can actually breed a Flemish giant doe. It has been done before. I don't recommend it but it it could happen so don't think just because your buck's a whole lot smaller than your doe that they can't get the job done because they can now another thing you need to remember is i said any domesticated rabbit can breed to another domesticated rabbit a wild rabbit or a wild hare cannot breed your domesticated rabbits I want to say they can not breed your domesticated rabbits. Wild rabbits and wild hares are a different species than our domesticated rabbits. This cannot breed with a cottontail. Regardless of its age, regardless of if it's ever bred before, it cannot breed with a cottontail rabbit. So in the history of rabbits, our domesticated rabbits actually come from what is now known as the country of Spain. Spain got its name from rabbit. Originally, it was known as the land of rabbits. And when it was first discovered by Phoenician sailors, they named it after rabbits. The Romans carried over that name after rabbits. Eventually, it translated and got passed down and it became Spain. But that is not the name that it was originally named. But still, Spain is a shortened version of the original name it was given, which I cannot pronounce because I don't speak those languages. But it translated from rabbit. So Spain was named after rabbit. And that's where our rabbits originally come from. They went from Spain to southern France where they were domesticated by French monks and bred for rabbit traits. And some of the breeds that we know today started out there. 
They then moved throughout England, were spread, were raised by nobility and those who were wealthy. They were not raised by common folk because they were seen to be a wealthy person's meat or hobby where they were bred for different traits and fur qualities and things like that. Eventually, they were imported into the United States after it went through the colonies and everything in 1890. And from there, they have spread through being bred as hobbies, as meat, as furs, things like that. They are not even close to being the same as our wild animals. The wild animals actually have a different number of chromosomes than the domesticated rabbits. So if you have your rabbits on the ground in a colony and you think you have all does and one of them has babies, chances are you have a buck, not that a wild rabbit got into your colony or bred through the fence. I've gotten that question before, so there is your answer. They can't breed. Now, it has become fairly commonplace that people will let their domesticated rabbits go thinking they're going to live a happy, healthy life in the wild, which is not going to happen because they don't have the instincts to avoid predators. They don't have the instincts on how to burrow and dig to live underground like our wild rabbits do. And they cannot breed successfully. I mean, they could attempt to breed, but it's not going to be successful with our wild rabbits. So eventually they are going to live a lonely life and die from being eaten rabbits that you see that are domesticated rabbits that are let loose in the wild are not wild rabbits they are feral rabbits and they can breed with your colony so if you see a rabbit like this white fur red eyes running around your property that was a domesticated rabbit this rabbit type it's called a red eye white is not present in wild rabbits they don't have the genetic to make up this coloring. So this is obviously a domesticated rabbit. Your broken rabbits you see, the ones that have like this splotchy coloring, those are called brokens. Those are not wild rabbits. Those would be a feral rabbit if you see them running around. Know your rabbit colors and that way you can spot a feral rabbit versus a wild rabbit because a feral rabbit can breed with your domesticated rabbits because they're the same species. Somebody was just irresponsible and let the rabbits go. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Next thing I want you to learn about is rabbits and their hormones. Rabbits don't have heat cycles like other animals like our goats. You can watch for them to go into heat. There are obvious signs that they're in heat. Put a buck with them, they'll get bred. You know, so many days later, I don't know, it's like 21 days or something. If they go back into heat, obviously they weren't bred. It's very obvious. If they don't go back into heat, they were bred. And then you wait for the time of them being due. Rabbits are very unusual in the sense that they don't go into heat. However, they do have hormone cycles. Rabbits will have high amounts of hormones for 12 days and four days of low hormones. During that 12 day period, they are easy to breed. Their hormones are high, they're ready to be bred, they're all excited, they're like, hey, usually, and I see it a lot in my rabbits. If your rabbits are used to being handled, what you can take and do is pet your rabbit. And if it's in the high hormones, a lot of times when you go down to their butt, they will lift it up like this. And that's like your signal to, hey, that rabbit's ready to be bred. Now, it's not always, but when they are really, really at the peak of their hormones, they'll do that. And a lot of times, I notice my rabbits do that after they kindle, which is where they have kits, because they are at peak hormones. And so when you rub their back, they think that a buck is mounting them, and they will actually lift their tail and lift their hindquarters because they're ready to be bred. Don't use that as trot and true, but if you're petting your rabbit and they lift their butt, you know they're in that high hormones. Another way for you to be able to tell if your rabbits have high hormones right now is to check their genitals. So, this rabbit I don't expect to because, you know, it's a baby. But anyways, you flip your rabbit over. To check genitals, your thumb goes on the abdomen, your pointer finger goes near the tail. Up and down. Spread the fur and press down. Okay? If it is ready to breed, that will be purple. If it is not, it's a pale pink like this. This rabbit is four weeks old, obviously not ready to breed. So, purple ready to breed, dark pink, ready to breed, red, ready to breed, light pink, we're in that four day window of having low hormones. Now, when a lot of people tell me that they're having problems 
breeding their rabbits, I tell them to breed them several days in a row. Attempt to breed them several days in a row. The reason is because they're most likely in that window of low hormones and they need to get to the window of high hormones. But you don't know where you fall in that four days of low hormones. So you don't know when your hormones are going to be high again. So if you attempt several days in a row, then you are able to get into that window of high hormones and you'll successfully breed. Now you can encourage the body to get into a period of high hormones and to kind of kick it off with a bang by doing different things like putting your doe with your buck so that she can smell him and kind of get those pheromones going, kind of get her hormones ready to go. You can swap their cages. So put the buck in the doe's cage, the doe in the buck's cage and leave them there overnight. Again, she's smelling his pheromones. He's smelling hers. Then when her hormones do come back in, they're like, yay, like, let's breed. And um, you get lots of follows very quickly that way. Uh, you can also do a little trick that we like to do, and that is put your dough into a five-gallon bucket, a rabbit carrier, cat carrier, whatever you have, and carry her around. A lot of people say if you take them on a car ride, it'll do it. But the reason for this is rabbits are a prey species and their whole purpose on this earth is to breed. And so when they feel like their life is at stake, they breed. And so carrying them around puts them in a new unfamiliar environment. They're not in any danger, but they are in a new unfamiliar environment. And they're kind of like, oh, uh, what's going on here? I need to breed. So if for some reason it's her hormones are high and she's just being stubborn because sometimes you have stubborn does, that trick will get them to breed. Now, if you have a doe who's pink, purple, you know, obviously ready to go, you've tried multiple times in a row and she still won't breed for you, she won't lift, the buck is trying repeatedly, chances are she's overweight. Now, rabbits are funny creatures. Other animals, when they get fat, you can see that they have fat rolls. Rabbits obviously have no fat roll. What rabbits do is they gain all their weight in their abdomen, around their organs, before they gain it anywhere externally. You're not gonna see it externally before they gain it internally. If you see it externally, your rabbit is not fat, it is obese, and it needs a diet ASAP. But what that fat does is it builds around their ovaries and their uterus usually first. Their kidneys, stuff like that, also get impacted. Their intestines, like it all gets crowded and fat and they get squeezed. And so the ovaries get squeezed, the uterus get squeezed. And what that does is it basically prevents them from having babies. So their body may be trying to signal those hormones like, hey, we need to get ready. It's breeding time, let's go. But the uterus is small because it's squeezed. The ovaries are small because it's squeezed. And your rabbit's like, something's not right here. They're not going to breed. They also don't have the energy to breed because they're legging around too much extra weight that rabbits aren't supposed to have. They are supposed to be flighty animals that are light and able to travel quickly. So they're not supposed to have any fat on them. Well, not much fat. Everything needs a little bit of fat. It's part of a healthy diet. We don't free feed any of our animals, um, so that limits that risk for us. Additionally, we feed a whole foods, our natural based diet, so we have less fat in our diet, so our rabbits have less of a risk of getting overweight. Okay, so we have covered wild rabbits and domesticated rabbits can't breed together. We have covered hormone cycles in rabbits because that's fairly important. We have covered checking genitals to see if they're in heat and petting rabbits to see if they're in heat. And we have covered that rabbits of any size technically can breed together. Just be careful that your uh, doe isn't like super small compared to your buck. Now some common occurrences you may have when you breed your rabbits. First, and you've probably heard this many, many times, you always, always, always take your buck to your doe. Why is this? In other species, a lot of times, the male is the one that is territorial. They're always defending their territory, stuff like that. In rabbits, the female is the one that is territorial and defending her territory. So 
she wants her space to be her space. She's got it set up the way she wants. If you put a buck into her space, she's going to try to defend it. She may attack him. A lot of times they will attack them. And they could injure the buck. They can even castrate the buck. Additionally, the buck goes into her space. Well, now he's got all these cool smells around him. And he's sniffing and sniffing and sniffing. And he's not getting the job done. Instead, if you take the doe to the buck, that puts her in an unfamiliar surrounding. She She's not territorial. Her body kind of says, oh, we don't know what's going on. Let's kind of have some babies to preserve our genetic lines to keep breeding. So it makes her more likely to breed. Your buck knows his cage smell. The only thing unusual to him now is your doe. So he's going to want to sniff her. He's going to want to investigate her. So that gets him attracted to her and interacting with her. Now, again, if you're trying to encourage her hormones and you're wanting to swap them cages, it's okay just make sure that they're both out of the cages when you swap. So don't try to put your buck in your doe's cage and then take your doe out because she's going to immediately start defending it, okay? So just take them both out and then swap their cages. Now he's going to sniff around and he's going to smell in her cage and he's probably going to pee all over the place and mark it because male rabbits spray like male cats do, fair warning, and he's going to spray around her cage and leave his scent in there. When she gets back into it, she's not going to be happy about it, but there's not going to be anything in there for her to attack, except for the cage itself. So she may act a little squirrely, but just give her some time, get used to his smell and everything in her own cage when she gets back to it, and she will be okay. Now what you've taken your buck to your doe's cage. Your doe may very well go and hump your buck. A lot of times, they will go and hump the buck's face, but I have seen them attempt to amount a buck. Now when you see this happen, first thing I want you to do is pick up your doe and make sure that it is a doe and not a buck because the sex change fairy will come and your doe will all of a sudden be a buck. If your rabbits are sexed too early on, they can be sexed incorrectly and even if they're sexed at the appropriate ages, they can still be sexed incorrectly if the person sexing them either is not experienced at it or if you hold your fingers in the wrong way so remember i said your thumb on the abdomen your your pointer finger at their tail and you spread that way if you spread sideways it can distort what you're looking at the buck will have a circle but if you take that circle and you spread it apart it can now look like a slit so make sure you're checking them the right way and you check them more than once so you check them, you see, yes, it is for sure a doe. What that means is that doe is showing her dominance. Now, no big deal. If she is an experienced doe and you've got an unexperienced buck, just treat it with a little caution because if she makes him feel like he is not dominant, he is going to kind of get some mental issues from that and he may lose self-confidence and not be willing to be the one that's like a go-getter breeder type deal. So if you see that, you can take her out, you can walk around, check her genitals, make sure she's ready to breed, and then put her back in and see if she does it again. If she does it again and your buck is just cowering in the corner, he's not dominant to her. He is not putting off the good pheromones. He may not be sexually mature or ready to breed if he is a young buck. Now, I have had them successfully breed after an instance like that, and that's fine. A lot of times, the doe will show her dominance. The buck will be like, nah, man, I'm dominant, and he will take over. But if she shows her dominance and he backs down and he's not willing to take over, then that's a good chance he's not mature or he doesn't have that good breeding buck status. All rabbits breed like rabbits until they don't. Not all rabbits make good breeders. Now in the wild, those who don't make good breeders don't make babies. They don't pass on those genetics. They don't pass on those traits. And so we only see good breeders in the wild. In our domestic situation a lot of times people breed rabbits that shouldn't be bred either they don't have good body qualities they don't have a uh, good traits they may be aggressive we don't breed aggressive they may not be very healthy we don't breed not healthy um they may be difficult to breed don't do that call them 
get a good breeder because you want to pass on those traits. Rabbits learn from their parents, but they also pick up genetic traits from their parents. So a buck who has high hormones and ready to breed can pass on those high hormones ready to breed to their son. And that's what you want. A buck that is low hormones, not very dominant, can pass that on to his son. And then you have a whole line of rabbits that are not easy to breed and that again is not what you want so breed the traits that you want to see in your future rabbits Whew, like i said a lot of information i hope i didn't confuse y'all with all that if a doe mounts a buck for one make sure she's a doe two see if the buck backs down or if he's going to take over for your doe if he backs down probably not the best breeder or he's too young to breed so you can hold off hold him back for another month and try again or if you know that he is of maturity age or somebody tells you he is a proven buck which means he has successfully bred before again don't mean that they're a good buck but they have bred before they kind of know what they're doing you can take your most experienced doe and pair her with that new buck and kind of teach him the ropes with a new buck always try to take an experienced doe who is at a high hormones who's showing like purple or pink genitals ready to breed and put them together because that automatically gives him that big hormone smell he's like oh yeah this is getting his hormones going he is going to immediately start off dominant hopefully mount her breed successfully and when he realizes that he gets his confidence grown and he's more likely to be a successful breeder when you're putting two newbies together so a new doe and a new buck they don't quite know the ropes nobody knows what's going on and so they can both just not get the confidence they need and while it sounds crazy that rabbits need self-confidence to be breeders i mean they have brains too like we all kind of need to put our self-confidence out there to be willing to take that next step and with rabbits it's the same so confident bucks are the way to go it is hot out that's one of the reasons we are starting the series is it's kind of a little hot to be out in the middle of the day working with my rabbits working with my goats things like that so i have a little bit of free time in the day and the few hours where it is like the hottest to sit down and talk to y'all and so that brings me to the topic of breeding rabbits when it's hot now our great rabbit friends come with a fur coat this means they do better in the winter in the cold than they do the heat we don't breed our rabbits if our 10 day forecast has temperatures that are sustained over 85 degrees especially if our nighttime temperatures are not getting below 60 degrees because i live in the hot humid south where it is hot and humid all the time so that is my cutoff for breeding 85 stay in above 85 for 10 days or not getting below 65 in the evening for 10 days because breeding is hard on rabbits not necessarily the act of breeding but being fat and pregnant in the heat is hard on rabbits think about a pregnant woman in a fur coat and rabbit fur is warmer than wool in a fur coat out in the summer even in the shade that is hot that is miserable and nobody wants to do that so don't do it to your rabbits now if you have an air conditioned area sure breed them all year round you know whatever but for us we have to take the summer off we don't breed our does in the summer but the trick with bucks your male rabbits is that some of them can go heat sterile so when those sustained temperatures above 85 degrees can make them sterile uh yeah it's kind of crazy so they will stop producing sperm in the sustained heat and when it starts cooling off it can take a little bit for their body to say hey it's going to be cool now let's produce sperm again the reason for this is a genetic instinct that comes in all rabbits so that they're not breeding in the heat of summer because it's hard on the does so the bucks don't produce sperm their hormones aren't high so they're not out there trying to breed the does so it's just a genetic thing it is just something that is natural in rabbits now a lot of rabbits have had this bred out of them so you may have a buck that doesn't go heat sterile it is something the rabbit world has been trying to breed out of domestic rabbits but 
a lot of rabbits still do go heat sterile. It's not been successfully bred out of almost any type of breed of rabbits. The Tamuk rabbits, uh, T-A-M-U-K, Tamuk rabbits, were specifically bred so that they do well in the heat and can breed in the heat. They were bred in Texas, and they're supposed to not go heat sterile. Now, we've only ever had a one Tamuk buck on our property, and I couldn't get the thing to breed regardless of the time of year, so he's no longer with us. Um, but they're not supposed to go heat sterile. He just was not a dominant buck. He didn't put off those dominant you know pheromones and he never got the job done regardless of what dough i put him with we don't keep rabbits who are hard to breed you know if you get that i have went through a ton of information on straight up breeding rabbits there are a lot of videos out there that are how to's on how to breed rabbits and we do have a video out there from our very first time breeding rabbits called breeding stubborn rabbits and we had all kinds of issues and I did a ton of research then trying to figure out how to get my rabbits to breed because they were new. I didn't know what I was doing. So it was a whole big hot mess and they were stubborn and I was stubborn. Eventually we did get them to breed and we got kits out of the deal, but I videoed it and it was a hot mess. So you can always watch that, but there are lots of how to breed rabbit videos out there. And then when the temperatures cool back down and I can breed again, I will create my own how to breed rabbits video and give you lots of tips and tricks and show you how we go about breeding our rabbits. But our rabbits are bred now and those are going to be the last rabbits bred for the year because it's getting too hot. Yeah, sorry. This will hopefully be one of the ones I breed this fall. Oh, one thing I didn't cover before we go. What age can you breed rabbits at? Now, this rabbit is a New Zealand rabbit. And New Zealand rabbits start reaching sexual maturity at four and a half months old. Now, a lot of rabbits will reach sexual maturity at about four and a half months old. Your smaller rabbits, your standard rabbits, your New Zealand rabbits, Californian rabbits, Rex rabbits, things like that. They will reach it at four and a half months old. A lot of people wait till six months to uh, start breeding their rabbits. And that's generally the method we have used in the past is six months. Because I know they are sexually mature by six months. They are at a good size at six months. And they should be ready to breed. However, I have done some research into it. And I know from reading research and reading studies, the Tamuk rabbits were bred as part of a breeding program and they began breeding them at four and a half months old and found that to have the best results. So this fall, I'm going to test breed some four and a half months old and then test breed up and see how we do. If it makes that big of a difference, of course, I will let y'all know. But generally, we wait till six months old to breed our rabbits. That way, we know they're sexually mature and we're not breeding immature rabbits and getting bad bucks out of the deal. Now, if you have a giant rabbit, think a giant chinchilla, a Flemish giant, a giant angora, things like that, they sexually mature later on in their life because a rabbit will not go into sexual maturity until they have reached 75% of their mature weight. So if you weigh your rabbits and you know an average of what your rabbits weigh at that sexual maturity mark, they should be 75% of what weight they will be as a mature adult. Flemish giants take a whole lot longer I say Flemish Giants because that's the ones that I tend to think of. But all giant breeds take a whole lot longer to reach 75% of the mature weight because they are bigger animals. So they take longer to reach sexual maturity as well. On average, 8 to 9 months is the earliest you're going to see your giant breeds start reaching sexual maturity. I have heard of some taking longer than a year to reach sexual maturity, which just blows my mind. Another reason we don't do giant rabbits. I know people think giant rabbits have giant litters. They are giant babies. They produce giant meat. Giant rabbits have bigger bones to hold up that bigger frame. And a lot of your feed in the first several months of their life is going into growing those bones, not going into growing their meat. Our New Zealand friends 
have light bones. They are very light in structure and most of their food goes into growing their meat. So that's why we love our New Zealands. They are quick growing. They put on a lot of meat. They breed easily and they produce large litters. If there is a question you have on breeding rabbits, please go ahead and put that down in the comments below and I will go ahead and answer those. So if you have questions, check the comments, see if somebody's posted your question and what the answers are. Reply to those, let's start a conversation, let's chat about breeding rabbits. Now, next week, I plan to discuss feeding rabbits. So breeding, feeding, eventually it will be housing, but next week is feeding rabbits. I will go over both a pelleted diet and a whole foods diet in that video because we have done both and we currently are on a whole foods diet. So if you have questions on those, leave those down below. I will make sure to answer them in that video. And if you have any suggestions for what you want to chat about in future rabbit chat videos, leave those down below as well. I can't wait to start this as its own playlist on YouTube so people can reference it and keep going back and getting all the rabbit information so we can get it out there so people who want to raise rabbits, regardless of your reason, can do so. Until next time, friends. Bye. I will see you later.